Hi guys, it's Debbie with Debbie J's Crafting Corner. I am super excited to show you guys what I just got in. We've been waiting for this. If you have followed me at all when it comes to light up cards, you know that Pear Blossom Press recently came out with the candle light. This one is one where you push the button to turn on the light and then it stays on. But how do you um, turn it off? you have to blow it out. So this is super, super fun. I just got in my first two pack and I'm gonna go ahead and make a card to share with you guys today. So I've already got a battery in. So let's just take a look and see how this thing works real quick. So we're gonna, and I'm gonna go ahead and say it, the light's gonna be a little bit bright because I don't have it in a card. It's not being diffused at all. So when I push the button, just be aware, it's gonna be bright. So I'm gonna press the button and you see, my hands are not touching it. So it is going to stay on until I blow on it. <sighs> and it pops off. It is just such a cool thing. So we're going to go ahead and make a birthday cake card using um, the Picket Fence sugar and calorie free stamp set and coordinating dies because there's this one cake down here with a single candle. And that's what we're going to use today. So I've been using this platform a bit lately. This one is the Spell on um, the Sizzix stencil and stamp platform and the waffle flower grip mat because I want to practice with it and see how it does because you guys know I just shared a video with that. One idea that I saw and I believe it was, I think it was Jennifer McGuire that said this, was putting a piece of cardstock underneath it because we've got the grid on the back, meaning it's not sticky where the grid is. It's sticky along the edges. So that's going to tell me where I want to line up my papers because I'm going to actually do a couple of things. Actually, I don't really need that. Oh well, we're going to use it anyway. I decided I'm going to use this piece of patterned paper as my background. So what I'm going to start off with is I'm going to just stamp out the cake where I think I want it to go on my, on my background. And I'm also going to take my light to make sure I've got enough room. So you need a lot more space. If you're using a one light, you know, you've got about this much space between the light and the button. This one, we've got a lot more because we've got that distance from the candle. So that is going to be right about there. Let me grab a pencil just to give an idea. And then I want to make sure it's in the center. And just like with all of the others, they come with the circuit boards attached. And to separate it, you just pop it apart. Don't worry, you're not going to break it. So I've got my one here and I'd say that this is about center. So that's where we're going to go with it. And I need to make sure that my candle is right about there. And this is a step that to begin with, I didn't really do because I'm not one to really plan out my cards that much, but I'm trying to do that a little bit more. especially when it comes to these. So I'm going to stamp this in some black ink so that I will have a, a placeholder for when I'm putting my final cake down. Okay, so I'm just grabbing out some Gina K. And it's kind of good that I did have that that piece in there. So now I know exactly where to line this back up with because my stamp, I haven't used that stamp before. So that means it's a bit sticky. <laughs> so it's trying to hold on to the cardstock too. Okay, just going to add some ink to my cake there. And we're going to stamp it down in the center. And remember, this is just the placeholder. So we're not going, this is not what it's going to look like when it gets done. I am going to stamp another one and we're going to color it up. So I'm going to also go ahead and stamp out the main sentiment and I'm going to do some heat embossing. Now I'm planning on using wow clear embossing powder, but I've also got some other clears that I really need to use up. So I think that's what I'm going to do this time. I've got some clear embossing powder that I don't know what brand it is. So I went ahead and used my anti-static powder tool. If you're using wow, which is my preferred, if you use WOW, then it has an anti-static property to it as long as you keep it in the original jar. And mine's old enough, it probably need, it probably isn't doing as good of a job on the static. So I need to use my anti-static tool more often. There we go. And then we can go ahead and heat emboss that. 
since it's go is going over black, I don't expect that this yellow color to this um, embossing powder is really going to matter all that much. If I was going on to white, it probably would not look as good. I also, also my heat gun just died, so I'm using a heavy duty one on low. It will still work, but if I do it too hot, it could start to bubble the embossing powder. So you do want to be careful with that if you're deciding to use the industrial, my husband's industrial heat gun. So along with that stamp and die set, I'm also going to use this one. This is from Pear Blossom Press. It's got all the fun um, messages that you need to put on there to let people know what to do, right? So I'm going to use the press here when I decide where I want Stop the button recording. to be. And I'm also going to use one of the little dies. So I'm going to use this tiny die over the candle flame that's on our background because our light is actually going to be behind this. It will be covered up by our new our new cake that we just cut out, but I'm wanting a little bit more light to come through. And now we have a little tiny hole where the flame was. Well, I don't really like the idea of the cake just kind of floating off in space. So I'm going to make a tablecloth. I was going to go this way, but I like the stripes better this way. So I'm going to cut a two inch strip to go across the bottom. So now we have a tablecloth that pretty much matches our cake stand, right? Okay, the next thing I need to do is decide. I'm going to go ahead and, and put this on there and then I'm going to decide where exactly I need my button to be so I can put the mark on there. So I'm just going to glue this on and then I'll trim it down to match the card base or card panel rather. Lining it up right with the bottom of my template area there. And then I'll just trim it off so that it matches. I will be trimming the entire panel down just a little bit so it has a white border on my card base, but this is good for what I need right now. Because I'm still making the final decisions on the stamping. And it's a bit harder to do the stamping in, say, your Misty to make sure everything is straight if it's too thick. I have tried to do that and it does not work too well. Okay, so now we've got our tablecloth and we've got our cute little cake. That is going to be adorable. And here we have our light again. And we know where the top of the light needs to go. It needs to go right there. And our button needs to go about there. So I'm going to mark here 
And just know that I need to put my press here right above that. So let's go ahead and grab that out and then we can go ahead and stamp that on there. The stamp I like the best out of this, and there are quite a few, is the one that says press here in this pretty script. And that's what I'm going to use for this card. And I think I'm going to go with, let's go with white. I usually go with black, but I think I'm going to stamp it in white pigment ink and then emboss over it in some white embossing powder. Double up on the white. And I'm doing it at an angle because it really doesn't have to be straight. Okay, really can't see it, but let's go ahead and put some embossing powder over the top. And we'll go ahead and heat up that little, little bit there. Next, before I start assembling everything, I'm going to go ahead and do that last bit of trimming. And I'm going to cut down about an eighth of an inch on all four sides. This was actually just slightly bigger than A2. The center of this, if I want it to be four inches wide, which is what I want, is going to be right in the middle of our candle. So I'm going to line that up with my two inch mark and use that as a guide for the vertical. And then the other parts, I can just trim it down a little bit. It needs to be five and a quarter by four. And now our cake is right in the middle, thanks to that little hole that I did. That is actually a benefit I wasn't expecting. Fabulous, love it, love it. Okay, so now we are gonna be using some score tape to adhere down our little mechanism, and then some of the Pear Blossom Press World's of Best Foam Tape to adhere, to basically pop everything up so that it's gonna be a flat card. That is one of my favorite things. Okay, there's the one that has the battery in it. Perfect. When you're putting the battery in, just make sure that the flat side that says plus on it is facing up because the top is your positive, the, the base on the circuit board is your negative, and if you put it in backwards, it's not gonna work. Had to test one more time. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple of pieces of score tape across the top here. And that's going to be what adheres it to my card. Okay, so our light goes right there and this is gonna go straight up and down. So before I push it in well and make sure that everything sticks, I am going to press the button to make sure it works. And it does. So you always have to make sure that you test everything. And I just realized that I probably don't have a big enough space there. Let me try it again, just to make sure, holding the cake over the top. This is actually triggered by sound. So if it doesn't actually go through enough, it may not actually work. So let's try it again. <sighs> Works fine. Okay, great. I was thinking I might need a bigger hole. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and press that down well. And now we can start putting the rest of this together. Now, what's gonna make it go perfect on our card base is gonna be this best ever foam tape. No, I'm sorry, the world's best foam tape from Pear Blossom Press. This stuff is fabulous. It is now my favorite foam tape. I'm probably gonna have to get some more. Uh, it is double thick, so it's perfect for the light up cards and it is the exact perfect um, size for what you need for these. And so that's just one of the features on it. Another is that the release paper comes off super, super easy. Even with my, um, yeah, my dip nails that are thicker than normal. So yeah, I can even do it with that, which is fabulous. And uh, what's the absolute best thing about this? What makes it the world's best? It's repositionable for 30 minutes after you place it down. So if you put it down in the wrong spot, or you get finished assembling your card and realize everything is crooked. I've done that, yes. So even if you do that, it's still going to work perfect. It's not going to rip your card. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and glue our little guy in place on here. 
And then I've got a couple more things I want to do to finish this off. And we're almost done. I'm just placing it right over the guide that I stamped on there before. Oh, I love it, love it, love it. Okay. I think I'm going to put a little bit more tape right along the sides there just to give it a little bit more, um, make it so it's not quite so saggy because that was a little bit saggy and I don't like saggy middles. So I'll put it right there and I'm making sure that it's low enough so it's not going to interfere with where my light is. Let's go ahead and mount this down onto our card base. Like I said, this stuff comes off easy, even with my thick nails. I'm going to try to get it in there in place the first time around. But you know what? Even if I don't, even if I make it crooked, I can still remove it. I actually got it on there perfect this time. Most of the time I have to move it. Okay, one other thing I wanted to add is one of these cute little gems. This is um, from High Supply. It's held in the Pear Blossom Press store, so you can get those there. And they are cute little candle flames. So I'm going to add a little yellow candle flame over our candle. Over our candle flame. Just adding that on with some glue. You can use any kind of gems for this, okay? As long as they are clear. If they have a silver backing, it will not work because you won't have you won't have a way for the light to shine through. With this, we've got our little candle flame there. And the light shines right through it. It's not blocked by that silver backing that a lot of gems have. Only thing really is left is to add our sentiment and decide, do we want to add any more embellishment to this? I think this is super cute just as it is. Adding on some liquid glue to the back of my sentiment. Actually, I don't want it there. I think I want it over on this side. Not 100% sure. It could go either way. And it breaks up some of the blue down at the bottom. Or you could put it up in the top if you want. But yeah, that is super cute. I may go back and add some gems or something to it. But I think this is perfect as is. And it definitely features that fabulous <laughs> candlelight. Anyway, you guys have a wonderful day. We'll talk to you soon. Bye, guys.